Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens. In this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of A Jest of Robin Hood by Frederick Serval and GMT Games. This is number two in the new Irregular Conflicts series, which is not coin. Not coin! It is like coin, but if anybody tells you it's a coin game, they are wrong. It's not a coin game, it's an ICS game. And I'm sure GMT wants to keep those separate, otherwise they would just name this Coin Junior or something like that. But uh, being that there's no insurgency, which is what is required to be a coin game, this is just an irregular conflict where the two, two or more sides are uh, not evenly aligned, so to speak. They're irregular. So, or it is an irregular conflict. Anyway, so this is based on the classic tale of Robin Hood, which everybody thinks they know. Actually, I haven't read the book. I need to probably read uh, Pyle's actual Robin Hood book. So the good news is this is for two players. It plays in about 45 to 90 minutes. It is a card-driven game. Unfortunately, the solitaire suitability is low. Now, I'm sure there are people who will play these uh, you know, true solo, just playing both sides, but I think there's some hidden information, so it's really more of a two-player game. Um, hopefully at some point they will come out with uh, a way to play it, a way to play it solo, or at least a digital app for it, which would be really cool. But it looks beautiful when I'm seeing you know, the artwork here on the front uh, by Chechu Nito, Robert Eltbauer, and Terry Leeds. Uh, I mean, that's gorgeous. That, to me, cover illustration is by Chechu Nieto. That looks to me almost very, uh, with the lighting and everything, kind of Brothers Hildebrand. Have you ever seen the, their Lord of the Rings artwork from the 80s? Just in the 70s, I guess. It's, it's, it, it evokes that, the way the light's playing off the characters. Anyway, sorry, this is really nice. I'd like to see that without the logo and just have the, the picture. But anyway. Very cool, and then there you can see the map we're gonna look at. So let's crack it open, see what you get inside. All right. Let's dig this out of here. So we start out with the ruse of play, ye old ruse of play. It is a 16, yeah, 16 page rule book. GMT's wonderful matte finish and a lovely green. And then full color, obviously on the inside. Matte finish again, like I said, so you don't get uh, all the glare while you're reading it at the table. Larger print than normal, so that's pretty good. So even though it's kind of, you know, it's dense, there's some, there's some graphics peppered in along the way, but you do get, um, Oh, there's a lot of graphics there, but uh, it's not very it's not very dense. A lot of white space, very easy to read. Doesn't look very rules heavy. Uh, in fact, it's pretty easy to learn. I understand. So you cover the stuff. There's key terms. Here's your uh, let's see your event deck setup, and then. Your counter scans. In case you buy a second hand copy or you lose one, you can find out what you're missing. All right, and then there's another copy set up. Example. All right, then we have a learning to play book, and this is by Joe Dewhurst. It uh, looks to be about 16 pages. And this is a nice blue. And we have a nice gold. It's pretty awesome. Very, very colorful, very, very, you know, evokes the period with the, uh, looks like the artwork. It's something, uh, very nicely done. So this is gonna guide you how to play. This tells you immediately how to win. So you just read this and you know how to win and you know, don't show that to your opponent and you got it. So it guides you through the components and then an example of play. This has a lot more graphics, obviously, so it's very nice for that. And then, as the example of play ends, if you're following along, you've set up and you're moving everything as the example tells you to do, then this is how the board should end up. 
And then we have a teaching guide. Now that you know how to play the game, all that's left to do is get another player and teach them. And then you've got Robin Hood and Guy of Gisborne. The ballad set in Yorkshire's Barnsdale area is the earliest written appearance of Guy of Gisborne. It was part of a collection of manuscripts acquired by Thomas Percy and later included in his 1765 publication Reliques. The manuscript likely dates to the 15th century and there are debates about whether it is older than Robin Hood and the Monk. It's a nice little poem you can read. It's a couple pages so you have homework. And then we have our yellow book, which is the playbook. This is a much thicker book. This comes in at probably 28 pages. Yeah, I know, 24 pages. And this is, in this case, this is uh, information about the game. So with GMT, you never know what the playbook's gonna be. Sometimes it's scenarios. Sometimes it's like this, where it's just kind of background information. Um, in fact, the, the, on page two, it starts with background articles, right? So there's different articles you can read about Robin Hood, and what inspired the designers. And then we have card tips and background on the cards, an opinionated bibliography, designer's notes, developer's notes, acknowledgements, and credits. And again, matte finish. A lot more text in this one though, right? Because it's, it's mostly informative. So let's see what they recommend for the bibliography. Tales of Robin Hood. Got Piles, Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. I have got to read that. I'm only reading a bunch of old books. <laughs> and see what we're talking about. Your friends through tears. Please, Joe, you can't just make everything a coin game. You pointing at historical conflict. Coin. Not <laughs> coin. So, little discussion going on there. Then we have our map board. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then we have our counter sheets. And these are tiny counter sheets. Well, it's one tiny counter sheet. Just one. Little. Oh, that was the front and back of the counters, right? So we got the tiny counter sheets here. We've got coins. We've got submission, which in revolt, royal inspection bridge, little wagons, and what they're worth. So you you rob a wagon, and this is what you get for it. And then you get your your money. So one sheet of counters, and we saw those in the rule book. Then we got our two privacy screens, one for each player. In this case, like other games, these are identical. So it's got the sequence of play, the rob sum, the, the summary of how to rob, order and justice, different travelers, royal inspection round. Like sometimes they have the different factions represented, but in this case, it looks like they're just identical little privacy screens. And then we've got. These are thick card, pre-punched uh, setup cards, set up an opening strategy for each side. And then plots, your available forces, kind of like your dashboard, the different deeds you can do, the different plots you can do. So it would appear that Robin Hood in green can recruit, sneak, rob, can do turncoat, donate, swashbuckle, and inspire. And the King's men can do hire, patrol, capture, ride, confiscate, and disperse. And they have the carriages available and the forces available. All right. And then we've got our GMT bag of bags, as usual. We've got two dice. They are going to be plus one, minus one, and zero. They are green and kind of an off white. And then we've got our playing pieces here. We've got green for Robin Hood and the kind of uh, light, uh, kind of a light blue gray is for Prince John and then a few other markers in there. And then we've got our cards. We've got two different types of cards here. We've got a brown and a green. So the brown cards appear to be your merchant cards that you can play. So the rich merchant, we have noble knights, Richard at the Lee, monks, the potter, the miller's son, the bishop of Hereford, and Guy of Gisborne. So those are brown. And then we've got our action cards here. And these are kind of green color on the back. And I'd heard somebody report that they saw different shades 
of green in the cards and I am not seeing it. I cannot detect that. They all look to be pretty identical to me, but maybe it's an illusion anyway. Day of market. Time to make a profit. The sheriff may return any number of henchmen to available to gain one shilling per henchman returned up to the number of submissive parishes. Then Robin Hood may return one merry man to available to gain half that number of shillings rounded down. Temporary truce. Opportunity to escape. The sheriff may move all henchmen. I said earlier Prince John, but it's who is the sheriff of Nottingham, I believe, or the sheriff of Nottingham works for Prince John. I'm getting it all confused. Like I said, I haven't read the book. The sheriff may move all henchmen to submissive spaces to shift one step towards order. Then Robin Hood may move all merry men to camps or forests and hide all merry men and shift one step toward justice. So these are some pretty large cards. I don't know if they're tarot size. I hate that we call them tarot size because tarot decks are not good. But anyway, Major Oak plays camp on Allerton Hill. Shift one step toward justice for Robin Hood. All spaces adjacent to Allerton Hill are now adjacent to each other. Keep this card as a reminder. So again, very nice artwork. I do like it very, again, fit with the theme. These look like they could be uh, woodcuts inside of a inside of a classic uh, or a uh, antique copy of the book. Very, very nice. All right, so we're going to put this up here and we will take a look at that game board. I'll turn it sideways just to make it fit all on the screen at once. So it's a four panel map. So that puts it at 17 by 22. Uh, it's kind of neat, they make, it, they make it look like this is a map that is sitting on the table because you got your little candle sitting on it, lighting the way. See the little glare, the little brightness there. Um, so you got your locations, which can be passive or submissive. Uh, you got a royal inspection space, the initiative space, um, and the justice space. Go from justice to order. So the Robin Hood side wants to bring it to justice, and the sheriff wants to bring about order. You got Nottingham, the Shirewood, Southwell, Southwell Forest, Dollarton Hill, and all these different one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven locations on the map. So the role inspection can go from unrest, mischief, governance, redeployment to reset. So I'm going to bring it a little closer. Just let you look at the graphics too. It's very nice. It does feel like I'm looking at a map. I'm going to turn it this way since we're doing this now. So you can see Nottingham there, and then the Royal Inspection Box, and then the prison. This does look like artwork that would be in an early edition of a Robin Hood novel. Initiative. So whether you believe this is a fictional, fictionalized account of a, of a historic person or just a fictional legend, um, this seems to be one of the first, I believe, like the ICS that's based on a fictional uh, IP, which is kind of interesting because I know the coin game uh, Red Dust Rebellion is also fictional. Science fiction, Mars, very cool. So interesting to see GMT branching out instead of, his, you know, into, into true, you know, documented history, but kind of branching out into kind of a, you know, fictional property, giving them more leeway to do some cool stuff. So anyway, we're gonna fold this up and recap what you get in the box. Look out! All right, so if you pick up a copy of A Jest of Robin Hood in the Irregular Conflict Series Volume 2 by Frederick Serval, Fetter Frederick Serval in GMT Games. You're going to get the, uh, I guess, victim cards or royalty cards. You're going to get the action card deck. You're going to get the bag of wooden tokens. Two dice. A bag of bags for organizing. You're going to get the two player dashboards. Your details. You're going to get the... <coughs> Two privacy screens, secret secrecy screens, one set of counters, very not counter dense. You're gonna get that beautiful board we took a look at, the 24 page playbook, the 14, 16 page learn to playbook, 
the 16 page rules of playbook and that is everything in a just a robin hood number two in the regular conflicts series not coin from gmt games thank you so much for watching god bless you bye, -bye.